Hello, my name is Pastor Freddy Reynosa, and I am the senior pastor at the Stoneham Memorial Seventh-day Adventist Church on Nobility Hill in Stoneham, Massachusetts. Our church has been serving the greater Boston area for over a hundred years through ministry, education, and community service. You can find out more about us at our website, stonehammemorial.org, or visiting us in person at 29 Maple Street. We thank you for joining us here at our weekly church service. Hello, and thank you for joining us. I am Pastor Christy Hodson, and I just want to share with you a couple announcements of things that we have upcoming. There have been some changes that are very recent, so I want you to keep those in mind. Um, first and foremost, I want to thank everyone who gave in any way, who prayed for our church in 2020. We have reconciled the books and we have a budget surplus. Um, and that is something that I am so thankful for you for remaining faithful, for choosing to prioritize giving during this time, which I know has been difficult for many of you. So we want to thank you very much for your prayers and for your giving. You should expect tithe receipts to come out and donation receipts to be available by the end of the month. Additionally, if you are struggling, if you need some help financially, um, a member, if you're a member of our church, we want to remind you that we do have the uh, Community Services Center on Gary Street where you can get food. Um, it's amazing food, fresh food. You get to choose what you'd like. Um, it's a wonderful ministry and it is something that you can take part in. Also, uh, we do have some uh, special family funds available. If you need special assistance, please reach out to me, to the church office, and we can set up a time to talk about ways in which we can help you as a church, because we are all part of God's family, and part of that means that we take care of one another. I also want to thank all of you who have been a part of our 10 days of prayer this year. Um, I have been blessed and I hope you have too, the sharing, the interaction, the prayer time. We do have two days left. We have this evening at 7 p.m. and Sunday at 7 p.m. You can uh, find the Zoom information. Um, it is in our newsletter. It's on our Facebook page. And if you do not get our newsletter, you can sign up for that at stonamemorialchurch.org. Um, so that is one way that we can continue to connect, continue to bring in this new year. Also want to remind you, since our 10 days of prayer is ending, ending on Sunday, the 10th, that means we resume our Wednesday night Bible study and connect group. It meets at 7 p.m. on Zoom, and we are studying the book of Isaiah. We're a little bit further ahead than our quarterly um, but this is a great time to study, connect, pray for each other, and just really delve into the Word of God with no agenda other than hearing from God. So please join us, put that on your calendar. Again, the Zoom links are on our Facebook page in our weekly newsletter, um, which is also shared on our Facebook page. So we'd love to have you be a part of this. Additionally, if you are a church officer, if you have been a church officer, if you want to become a church officer, um, there are trainings that are being provided by the Southern New England Conference on three Sundays in January. Sorry, some of this is a little bit late notice. On January 10, there are certain trainings. There's going to be other trainings on January 24th and January 31. These will all be done via Zoom and it's going to be held from 9 a.m. to noon. You can sign up for that at tinyurl um, slash SNCC training, or we do have links to this on our Facebook page, um, in our newsletter, and as well on the SNCC, dot, uh, SNCC online website as well. And last but not least, uh, I do want to share with you that due to the extended state safety protocols, the extended restrictions that have been put in place, we are going to continue with our online only worship services through the 23rd of January. We want to keep you safe. Uh, we want to do the right thing. We want to 
love our neighbors in a tangible way, and this is one of the ways in which we're doing that. But we'd love to have you participate in our live Zoom Sabbath School classes um, for adults and kids and youth. Uh, we'd also love to have you be a part of our online worship experience. Uh, you can tune in during the, the premiere at 11.15 a.m. Um, this is done on YouTube. Join the chat. Um, we'd love to fellowship and talk with you. Also, uh, if you want to share, uh, if you want to add your piece of worship, whether it be through music or uh, children's story, scripture reading, prayer, anything that you would like to do to contribute, please just let us know. We'd be glad to have you uh, as a part of our online worship service. I'd like to take a minute and just pray with you as we open up our worship service together. Oh, great and glorious God, we are so grateful for your blessing. We are so grateful for your guidance. And we are so grateful for a day in which we can leave behind the pressures of this week, where we are not only advised, but asked to be a part of communion with you and with each other, to build relationships even if they are done distantly. We ask for your Holy Spirit to be with us during the service as we watch together online. May you work in our hearts. May you open our ears to your voice and not our own. We thank you, Lord, and we want to ask that you fill us with the humility to serve you in the ways in which you are asking. In Jesus' name, amen. Hi kids, my name is Dave, and I'd like to tell you a story from the country I come from. I come from America. Nearly 250 years ago, a war was raging in America. The new Americans were fighting against the British. They wanted to live their lives in their new land free and clear of their old lives and leaders from their old land. This war for independence was called the Revolutionary War. During war, people do very unkind things. Later, they look back and wish they'd been kinder to others, even to the enemy. But during war, most people treat their enemies very, very bad. The stress of war upsets people so much, sometimes, they even treat their neighbors poorly. During the time of the Revolutionary War, there was a pastor named Peter Miller. Pastor Peter looked after a church in a small town in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. He visited people in their homes, read from the Bible to them, and prayed with them that their sons would come home from war alive. He also preached sermons every weekend in his little church. Pastor Peter had a horrible neighbor. He may not have been a horrible person before the war, but he was now. Every time Pastor Peter walked past the neighbor's house, he would get shouted at mean things. When his neighbors saw Peter in town, he would laugh and call him names. He would make fun of Pastor Peter's prayers and kindness to people. He's just coming to visit you for, for the free cakes and tea. Sometimes his neighbor would even come to town when church was on just to make fun of people as they came out of the church. Following that fool, Pastor Peter, oh, what a bunch of sheep. Pastor Peter tried not to let it bother him, and he told his church members to ignore the man. Pastor Peter knew his neighbor was suffering. During the war, Pastor Peter's neighbor was having a hard time. He was losing money as his business failed. The more he failed, the meaner he got. One day, some soldiers came to the neighbor's farm and arrested him. They took him to the local jail and locked him up. In a very quick trial, Pastor Peter's neighbor was accused and convicted of treason. Treason is when you do something to help the enemy win. Pastor Peter couldn't sleep the night after the conviction. He knew his neighbor was mean and that nobody liked him because of his angry words, but he didn't believe it. Pastor Peter didn't believe his neighbor had helped the enemy. He couldn't sleep, so he prayed. He prayed for wisdom. He prayed for his neighbor who is now in jail and would be hanged in just a week. In the morning, Pastor Peter got dressed. He put on his walking boots and he began walking. He walked 70 miles to where he knew General George Washington was leading the troops. It took the better part of three days to walk the 70 miles. He stopped only to sleep in kind people's homes when it was dark and began walking again at first light. 
When he arrived at the military camp, he found General Washington and told him about his neighbor. He asked General Washington to write a pardon which would set his neighbor free. I respect your pastor's heart, General Washington said, but I cannot set a man free just because it hurts your Christian sensibilities that he be hanged. If he has been found guilty of treason, then he is guilty of treason. I walked these 70 miles because I believe him to be innocent, Pastor Peter said. I beg you for my neighbor's life. I'm sorry, General Washington said. 70 miles is a long ways. Your neighbor is lucky to have a friend like you. Friend? Pastor Peter laughed. He only speaks wicked words about me and my church. If anything, he's, he's my worst enemy. This caused General Washington to jump out of his chair. What? He cried. You walked 70 miles to save the life of an enemy? You know, that, in my judgment, puts this matter in a different light. And after thinking about it for a while, George Washington said, I will grant your pardon. Pastor Peter walked home as quickly as he could. He arrived the morning his neighbor was to be hanged and entered town and as, as his neighbor was being walked to the gallows. Ha! The neighbor shouted. Pastor Peter, come for his revenge, hey? Come to watch your old wicked neighbor hang. Pastor Peter said, not at all, and handed the pardon to the jailer. His neighbor was set free and allowed to go home. How do you think this affected the neighbor? What about the townspeople? How do you think it made Pastor Peter feel to know that during wartime he had saved a life, even if it was the life of an enemy? We are living in the middle of a war, a war against germs. COVID is making some people very sick, but it's making even more people angry and upset even causing some people to be horrible neighbors. We can choose how we act and how we speak. We can be like that neighbor or we can be like Pastor Peter. Do you know what made Pastor Peter different? He loved Jesus. He talked to Jesus and he wanted to be like Jesus. He had read in Matthew where Jesus said, you have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. I'm making this recording from my office here at the church on Friday morning. So I apologize for not being a little more appropriately dressed for a Sabbath morning offering reading. However, I want to share some good news of how I believe the Lord has richly blessed our congregation in this past year. In spite of the pandemic, in spite of not being able to fellowship together on a more regular basis, we have been richly blessed. Our tithe base this past year has an increase of more than $30,000. Our church budget ended the year $8,500 ahead of what we actually spent. In a revolving fund loan, wow, we've paid over $92,500 toward our outstanding balance, and that's $56,000 more than what our actual payments would have been. This leaves us with a balance of $237,446. And at this rate, hmm, do you think we could finish it in two years? With God's help, I know we can. Every year in Alaska, a team of dogs and men take a challenge called the Iditarod. During their 1,000 mile trek, the team works together to achieve the common goal of finishing the race in the town of Nome. In 1925, the town of Nome had an outbreak of diphtheria. The quickest way to send the antitoxin was by dog sled. 20 mushers volunteered with over 100 dogs to pull their sleds. They created a relay known as the Great Race of Mercy, which began on January 27. If the medicine didn't arrive quickly to the town of Nome, many people would die. So the mushers pooled their resources and created a relay. 
Each group of dogs and mushers would pass the cylinder, which contained the antitoxins, to the next team of dogs. On February 2, at 5.30 in the morning, the final leg of the relay arrived in Nome, with the dog Balto leading the sled. Today, a statue of Balto is in Central Park, New York City. There is a toxin in this world called sin, and it causes all of mankind to perish. But we have the antitoxin. We have the saving grace of our Lord Jesus. And we need to pass this antitoxin on to others. Through him, healing may be found. Our conference advance offering goes to help those still dying for want of this cure. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Lord Jesus, this morning I pray that you will touch each heart and mind as they plan for their giving for this week and for the days and weeks throughout this coming year. I pray that you will continue to bless each cheerful giver and bless our church as we minister to the community of Stoneham. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy Sabbath. Today's scripture reading is in Psalm 29, verses 3, 4, 10, and 11. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The Lord sat a throne at the flood, and the Lord sits as king forever. The Lord will give strength to his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Amen. Happy Sabbath. It's time for prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for giving us this day. We ask that you may please be with us as we are in our homes, um, taking time to spend with you. God, we ask that you may please be with the pastor as they preach. Let us understand your message and send your Holy Spirit to please be in our lives. Lord, we ask for your protection during these difficult times, and we just ask for hope because there's so much that's going on. We're thankful for the blessings that you've bestowed upon each and every one of us, and I ask that you may bless all our friends in church and everyone around the world. For those that are sick, we ask for your healing hand upon them and for the health workers that are working to help your people, we ask that you may continue to give them the courage and the hope so they may save your people. Thank you for giving us this day of rest. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>
Hello and welcome. I am Pastor Christy. I am so glad that you have chosen to spend some time with us today in worship. You know, there is so much going on in our world today. There's so much noise. There's so much confusion. There's so much distraction. And I wanted us to think a little bit about um, what voices fill our minds. Um, what influences us? Because we are being bombarded on every side. We're being told what to think and who to listen to. How do we decide what we should listen to? How do we decide who has the truth, who is giving the right information, who is making it their mission to gaslight us into believing a false reality? I want to suggest to you that the answer lies in the Psalm 29. It was written by King David, and it tells us about the power of the voice that we should be listening to, the voice that brings us glory, the voice we are to praise. And so with that, I am going to share the verse on my screen. It is Psalm chapter 29. We're going to read through the whole thing. And I have the New International Version. And here it says, Ascribe to the Lord, you heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord thunders over the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The voice, the Lord breaks in pieces the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon leap like a calf, Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord strikes with flashes and lightning. The voice of the Lord shakes the desert. The Lord shakes the desert of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord twists the oaks and strips the forest bare. And in his temple all cry glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord is enthroned as king forever. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. You know, here we see the power of the voice of the Lord. This is something that all heavenly and earthly audiences cannot deny. This is the voice that spoke the world into existence, the universe into existence. And it was there when the spirit hovered over the waters at the beginning of time as this world knows it. It was there when the flood waters executed the judgment of God on his creation. The humanity that destroyed the earth long before it was washed clean in tumult, a destruction to bring peace and wholeness. This is the humanity that remains selfish and self-serving after the flood. It is one that takes pride in oppression and destruction. But like the pride associated with the cedars of Lebanon in the days of David and beyond, it cannot stand when faced with the voice of God. When we think of the voice of God coming in thunders, we think back to Exodus. And that is in Exodus 20. Uh, Exodus 20 verses 18 through 19. We see how people react, the so-called people of God, how they are reacting to God's voice. And so we see that Exodus 20, 18 through 19, when the people saw the thunder and lightning and heard the trumpet and saw the mountain in smoke, they trembled with fear. They stayed at a distance and said to Moses, speak to us yourself and we will listen, 
but do not have God speak to us or we will die. These are the people that God had just brought out of Egypt, the people that God was with and the pillar of fire and the clouds, and they could not stand his voice. This voice was one that struck fear in the hearts of those who did not know who God really was and who God really is. They see a God of destruction and malice, and they are blind to God's true character of righteous justice, mercy, and love. So they listen to others speak for God, not able to hear the true voice for themselves, wanting someone else to interpret for God, seeking humanity over divinity. You know, we would do well not to limit ourselves to a God that only is in temples and churches that we have created for ourselves. We should not be seeking humanity, but divinity. And I realize the irony of that as I am here trying to speak for God. But in the end, it is God's voice that we need to listen to. You see, those who see God seated on the throne in heaven's palace, they know that the only possible response to the all-encompassing divine voice is to proclaim the single word, glory. Because when we acknowledge God as the rightful ruler of heaven and earth, we are given strength to make our way in this world with peace and wholeness. Let there be no mistake that God's peace was not at all in the events that we saw happening around our country this week. Just because someone raises a Christian flag or a cross does not mean that their actions are in any way pleasing to God. Throughout history, Christian symbols like the Christian flag or banner or a cross have been harbingers of death and oppression. Yes, the group that stormed the Capitol in Washington, D.C., waved Jesus flags and Jesus 2020 banners, but they also erected a noose and they asked God to honor their violence and their bigotry. This is the same violence and bigotry that sadly has been part of the American church since the days it uprooted and starved out the indigenous peoples of this land. Whitewashing away our history does not absolve us of our Christian duty to acknowledge the sins of our nation, our church, and ourselves. Only when we acknowledge them can we then repent, asking God to soften our hearts and letting the Holy Spirit guide our actions and reframe our focus. We are tasked to be a light on a hill, bringers of peace, restorers of justice, standing against oppression wherever we find it, even in our own ranks and our own hearts. The Jesus that the insurrectionists invoked this week on Capitol Hill is not the Jesus I know. It is not the Jesus of the Bible. They have made God in their own image, while at the same time making a mere mortal and a form of government their God. We must speak out against these things when we see them happening, especially when they claim to be following the voice of God. Yes, I understand that this world is broken. We are homesick for the world to come, something that we have been promised and hold tight to that promise. And it feels like that day is gonna come any second now, but it is not here yet. And so that means that we don't give up our part. We still have a part to play to bring about the unity and equity, to tear down oppressive systems and follow the true example of Jesus for as long as we have breath. And who is Jesus? Who is the one whose example we are supposed to follow? Jesus is both the voice of God 
and the one God's voice declared to be my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Jesus came to bring healing, salvation, and wholeness. He did not desire power or fame or even his own way. Jesus heeded the voice of God and went to the cross for us, not as some sort of political performance, but as the voice of God crying out, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. It is a voice that calls us to repentance, to redirection, and to love. So what voice are you listening to today? How much more does God have to do? How much louder does God have to be for you to hear and listen to the voice that mightily proclaims peace and wholeness? The voice over the waters and in the heavens. The voice calling you and me to honor God's glory in our actions. What is God's voice saying to you? I'd like us to pray. And I want you to join with me in praying for the strength to follow the call of Romans 12, 21, today and every day. That prayer is do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And may the voice of God fill our hearts and minds as we put our trust and the creator of the heavens and earth. Lord God, save us from ourselves. Fill us with your goodness, your mercy, and a heartache for your justice. Amen. Hello, this is Pastor Christy Hodson. Thank you for watching our program today. We hope to see you soon in person or live on YouTube for our Saturday morning worship service. You can also find information about online Bible study groups at our website, stonemmemorialchurch.org. We currently have a food bank and clothing distribution center located at 9 Gary Street and operate Greater Boston Academy, an elementary and preschool at 108 Pond Street. If you have any questions, please call us at 781-438-2977. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.